I bought a GPU that was used to mine to game. Did I make a huge mistake? What's up guys, Andrew here on my channel Gear and Inc, where I get to share what I'm passionate about with you. And on my channel, that's PC Tech, Games, and Gear. And before we get into today's topic, remember if you haven't already, I'm giving away everything that you need to make your first computer. I'm in a giveaway going on right now on my channel. The video link is down in the description below. So if you haven't entered that, please do so. Um, that giveaway has got a couple more weeks left in it. So good luck to everyone. And remember that once we hit 12,500 subs, we're gonna do another giveaway. So let's talk about today's topic. So before I get lit up in the comments, let me say something incredibly clear. Am I advocating for people to buy used mining GPUs for gaming? No. Let me say that again in case you missed it. No. I'm not saying that. I made this video for a couple of different reasons, mainly which I was, you know, for me, I've bought and used uh, computer parts that were used for a really long time. So I have some advantages when it comes to buying used PC equipment. But just know something, the reason this video kind of came about was twofold. I needed a new GPU for my wife's system, her computer. Secondly, I've gotten DM after DM from all these people asking me, should I buy a GPU used for mining? What are the risks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this video is more for you guys than it is for anybody else. So I bought this GPU about a month ago. I've been using it for about a month. The first reason why I was okay with buying it is because with shipping, I got it for right around 170, 180 um, on eBay, meaning I got it for much under MSRP for a 1066 gigabyte. That's the first way I was able to reduce the risk I was taking. The major reason I don't recommend people buying these used GPUs, outside of all the reasons I'm going to go into these video uh, into this video on, is because most people just aren't assume, you know they don't want to assume the risk. It's your money, and at the end of the day, I completely understand not wanting to throw it away on a GPU that's burnt up from mining cryptocurrency. For me, I have bought and sold used equipment for PCs forever. I take care of all of my stuff, and so I kind of know what to look at. But I'm also willing to take the risk, which was why I was willing to buy this GPU in the first place. So the pricing was the very first reason that I decided that it was okay to at least try and buy this GPU. Secondly, I made sure I got a manufacturer with the manufacturer's warranty I could uh, trust, specifically EVGA. Now, when I went in and registered the card, um, it hadn't been registered before or the person who owned it had unregistered it. So now I have a hold of that warranty because they are transferable. Doesn't mean that they're gonna honor everything, especially if it was used for mining, but at least I'm reducing my risk. Now, the other thing is that I wanted to test this GPU thoroughly. So I've been using it for a month to game before I even thought about making this video because here's the thing six months from now it could break three months from now it could break two years from now it could break and that's the second thing you have to ask yourself how long are you going to be using your GPU for me as an enthusiast I go through GPUs and upgrade every 12 to 24 months so if I'm doing things that way I'm not really worried if it does break in about two years because I'll probably already have something else new so those circumstances are what allow me to buy this used product where a lot of you might not be able to because you don't either have the luxury, the income, or you're just not in a position where you would feel comfortable doing so because you don't have the experience. So that's why I advocate for most of you not to, but I've gotten DMs from tons of you asking if you should. So let me show you kind of everything that I did personally with this GPU. So if you're going to do it, regardless of all of our advice not to do it, at least you have a little bit, you know, some tools to make you better prepared. So we're gonna go over all the different method uh, methodology. I'm gonna have a link down in the description below, but let's get started. So the first thing I needed to figure out was exactly how long this GPU might have been used to mine. Now it's an impossible question to answer and there's no way to know for sure, but there's a way to kind of reduce at least some of the timetable and some of the uh, guessing. So the first thing is I know that this GPU specifically was released in July 19th of 2016, so it's at least that old. Now, however, using um, GPU Z from Tech Power Up, I'm able to get the BIOS version of the GPU. Looking up the BIOS version, that BIOS was released about 10 months ago. So it is very possible because a lot of GPU miners will flash the BIOS to get better um, mining hash rates that they may have flashed the uh, BIOS back to the original BIOS or updated it. But in any case, it's safe to say that this GPU was used to mine for at least 10 months as that is the version of the BIOS that's currently on the GPU. Now I wanted to use the old uh, video memory stress test, but basically it's old and I got a lot of fails, not because anything on the GPU failed specifically, but because it really has an issue for some reason with GDDR5. All right, so what that meant was in order to stress test this, I use Unit Engine's benchmarking. So I did leave this at 1920 by 1080p at high, I turned anti-aliasing off, 
and I decided I was going to let it run for a couple of hours to get an idea if there was any instability or crashes. And lo and behold, there wasn't. Now, I didn't overclock this specifically because I didn't want to void the warranty any more than it might be. And I left the um, CPU and the RAM at stock. My room was actually kind of hot. It was 94 degrees Fahrenheit and the CPU never went over 77 degrees Celsius. That was with the fan curve set to default. I didn't mess with it because with these GPUs, if there was something that was going to be worn out, it would be the bearings on the fans. And so I kind of wanted to prevent any more damage to those. So I left it at stock. And as you can see, it performed very well with no instability, no crashes. Now I hear you because you're like, well, what about gaming? And that's the whole point, right? These GPUs that were used for mining and for gaming, again, not saying you should, don't pay attention to the FPS on Battlefield. Basically, we are um, refresh locked by the monitor. This is a 60 hertz panel I tested all of these on. What I want you to notice is that there's no graphical glitches. We're not getting any artifacting. We're not getting any lines. When we move on to Overwatch where um, basically we're able to get more FPS and technically the monitor is able to show and it actually can track that, you'll see that the FPS is extremely high. This is what you would expect out of this setup. We're not losing anything. Again, there's no lines, there's no artifacting, there's no inconsistencies, there's no frame dropping, nothing that would indicate that the GPU or the RAM, or sorry, the VRAM is broken in any way. Now on PUBG, obviously we get about 80, uh, 81 FPS average and that's more of a knock against the fact that Ryzen doesn't have as fast a single core performance and uh, PUBG is just not a great Great optimized game but at the end of the day guys I, I think you guys can see I've been using it for a month and this is the consistency that I've seen so there you have it guys those are all the different things I've done to test this GPU out including using it for the last 30 days now once again while I don't advocate you for buying these GPUs especially because people are still trying to get ludicrous amount for GPUs that were used for mining if you could find a really really good deal and you're willing to take the risk, it might be a good route. Specifically because even if Nvidia does release their new GPUs coming out in June or July, um, the SKUs that most people use, specifically the 1060 range, again, those probably won't be coming out till later in the fall because they usually space releases for GPUs a month apart or 45 days apart. So there are a lot of you guys who want to get a new GPU, but if you can, I would still wait because with these new GPUs coming out, the current GPU prices should continue to go down. So if you don't need a new GPU, no, I don't advocate it for it. But if you absolutely have to get one and you can find a good deal, and again, you're willing to take the risk, maybe it's worth it. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and it was helpful to some. If you like this video, go ahead and leave me a big thumbs up. If you didn't, leave me a thumbs down. But remember to get subscribed. Big th uh, shout out to all my Patreon guys, my Twitch subs, and everyone who uses my Amazon affiliate link. Guys, if you remember, if you are a Patreon or Twitch sub, you get a mention at the end of this video. Um, you see that in the credits at the very end. And then on top of that, remember, if you use my Amazon affiliate link, guys, it really makes a difference. So if you're buying computer parts or anything on Amazon, um, make sure to use my link if you want to support me directly. Can't tell you how much I appreciate all of you. I've got another uh, couple of cool videos coming out soon as well. So we hope to see all of you next time here on Geared Inc.